we were just talking there while Pat and Evan was explaining um, what's going to happen Man United with Graham McInerney about you are a Man United fan. I am, yeah, <laughs> for my troubles. But, but uh, I don't know, there could be, could be a look around the corner and see how the window, transfer window goes. Are you, were, you, were you one of those people who wanted Ole Gunnar Solskjaer to get the job after the Paris Saint-Germain game? We were talking earlier on, um, we played a clip of Rio Ferdinand who was like, give the man a blank contract and let him write down whatever number he wants, he's the right man for the job. <laughs> I suppose at the time he seemed like the right man for the job, he was saying and doing all the right things. He still is I suppose, um, but I suppose he probably just needs a new, new team and, yeah. and I suppose the players as well and all that. So probably give him a transfer window or two to judge him. If, um, you know, if, if there were players in your dressing room who weren't pulling their weight the way some of the Man United players aren't pulling their weight at the minute, what would happen? Uh, I suppose, I don't know, it's, <laughs> it's hard to know. I suppose that is, you can hear a lot, is that as good as they are or, or is, it, is there more in them? Like, they are trying and they're working hard going on a few games, but maybe, maybe I suppose Roy Key would say it a bit better than me, but a bit more rootless about it. But, uh, yeah, I suppose you will get a few bo- a bit of bollock in, I? Yeah, from each other. Yeah, oh, you would, yeah. yeah and you'd percent. expect it? You would. And was that the culture when you came into the team? I suppose there's standards there. You kind of you'd kind of want to meet, even being involved with the club and all that earlier on in the year. You, you try to set a standard, a high standard, to everyone to reach. And I suppose if lads are bollocking each other for dropping a ball, it's only going to raise the standard and make that person better. Might sound like a bad thing to do at the time, but... Do you know, it's only going to improve them and, and me. And when you were first breaking into the squad, was that something you accepted? Or was that something you were like, hang on a second, I mean, you know, I'm, uh, I'm going to make some <laughs> mistakes here. Uh, I suppose any time, I suppose there's no flawless training session or a flawless match either, but any time you do make mistakes, I'd be the first one to think about it, I'd be pissed off about it, I wouldn't want to, i try the same thing again mostly in training, yeah. hopefully. To you know, perfect keep, it. Yeah, keep yeah. trying it. If I fix something up, I try it again and keep trying until I got it right and then I'll move on from it. Yeah. Whether whatever it is, a sideline or whatever, I can't finish on a bad one, yeah. Is that a consistent process? Is that something you're still working on where there are things in training where you're still trying to perfect? Ah, there is and there always will be, I'd say. Like, you're never really a finished article. Like, you, you might... You might practice low balls there for two or three weeks and get unreal at it and then, wait a minute, <laughs> I need to start practicing high ones or, or whatever. So it's, it's trying to balance everything really. Yeah. Just, uh, just want to tell everybody, Grills in studio this morning with thanks to Littlewoods Ireland who are proud sponsors of the All-Ireland Senior Hurling Championship. Their hashtag style of play campaign continues to bring together the world of sport and fashion, showcasing the style and skills of the players both on and off the pitch. Follow the hashtag style of play on the Littlewoods Ireland website or their social channels. Are you into your fashion? I am a bit. <laughs> I am. I, I like to dress up every now and again. Like uh, I wear a lot of track suits every now and again. But, yeah. You know, it's good to get the suit It's out. good to get the jeans on or whatever it took or whatever black yeah. tie event or Yeah. It's nice to dress up. So yeah, all star. The all stars do matters, right? Yeah, yeah. Well, uh, there's a lot of lads trying to outdo each other, I'd say, in the dresses <laughs> as much as the women's, so it's competitive enough on that side too. How's the hurling going this year for you? What's, uh, what's your own level of form like at the moment? Um, I suppose we've all been involved with the club early on in the year, kind of gave me a bit, of, a bit of time away from the setup, so I kind of feel, feel fresh and, I suppose, uh, ready to go. So uh, form, is, form, form is good. And How do you gauge that? How do you gauge your own form? Like, what, what when, you know, when do you feel like you're going well? What do you have to do? Are there certain markers in your head that you go, okay, yeah, I'm, you know, my touch is good, my physical strength is good, my fitness is, my high-end sprinting is good. What, what are you looking for? Um, I suppose you're probably looking for perfection, which, which is never really possible. So you're always kind of looking, seeing what you need to improve on. And, and I suppose there's no better way of doing that than playing games. The more you play games, even, even with club or anthem, there's plenty of things to take away from. And that's more probably the exciting thing about it. Like it gives you something to work on and something to focus towards for the next day and then the weeks the weeks just fly that way. How was the club month for you? Um we it was it was good it was good, yeah. Um see we were we were off the back of a high kinda. Of. We we beat Charlotte in an All Ireland final, so mm-hmm. so after that we had there was a bit of a high there. Lads uh, lads were eager to go again, like they tasted a bit of a bit of victory. So it it was it was good. It was two matches it was a three Two matches we played, um, I suppose the lads are raring to go again, like they can't believe it's over already. They're, yeah. they're kind of in championship mode, but I suppose they'll relax down for a while and put their feet up and then get things going again for championship later on in the year. And is it a case of like training once with the county during the week and a couple of times at the club, or how does it work? Um, yeah, there is, there's, there is demands from, kinda, from both, but um, 
I suppose. I suppose in the club week, the players do want to see you, see you down and just uh, give an encouragement. So I try to give as much time to, to both uh, as possible. Yeah, it seems that it kind of makes sense having two separate things. That, like just looking from the outside in, it seems that perhaps a club month in the middle of two competitions perhaps isn't the best way to do it. it it's hard to tell, but some counties clearly have it off to a T when it comes to the month of April. Yeah, I suppose it is. It is tricky. Like it's hard to know. Everyone kind of does give out about it and how it's kind of given them a taste for it, and then you're taking it away. But it's hard to know. Like, is there a structure there better than it? It's hard to know. Like, um, I know there's a lot of ideas kind of flying around there, but even seeing our lads, like they were, they got the championship fever, and then they're kind of it's kind of taken away from them a bit. But I suppose that will see can they keep hungry for the next few months, like? Um, you obviously uh, are a centre back. Were you always a centre back? Now, is that something that you kind of have? become as your career has gone on or were you um i'd say if if i could look from underage when i started playing all the way up i'd say 90 95 percent of my games was center back maybe a small at midfield but it was did you ever have any choice about that or was that like a that we know where he's playing <laughs> go up and take the jersey <laughs> pull that six um uh, I'd say it was a bit of both, probably. You know, it was a bit of. I liked playing there. I always kind of found a bit of a bit of freedom in the position, and I suppose the position I kind of got used to knowing and growing up playing playing it. How has it changed since you started? Is um, you're 28 now, is that right? Yeah, 28, yeah. yeah. So you've obviously been playing. Um, I presume you were playing senior at 18 or 19, were you for the club? Uh, yeah. Yeah. So you've 10 years of senior club hurling and whatever. Um, five seasons now with Galway senior. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. Fourteen. Yeah. So, how has the role changed? Um, it's just going attention to detail, really, more so than anything. That's kind of that's kind of changed a bit. Um, but it's still the same kind of commitment levels or whatnot. I know lads are kind of. Sorry, I mean the centre back role. Like in, oh, the centre back yeah, role. Yeah, like it, it, has that position moved? Is your responsibility different now than it would have been? A lot of Roman elevens, I suppose. Now, what do you do? Do you pass them off or do you go with them or how does that... I suppose you probably have two choices. You can either pass them off and try all the position or you can, you can follow, follow out the field. It's kind of, every game is kind of different and you kind of have to make that decision. Like, but you, you predominantly want to kind of keep that six area kind of full and plugged up a small bit. You know, so it's, it's a kind of zonal role. That it, it is, it can be. It depends. You have to be able to adapt, I suppose, in, to, to different scenarios and different types of games. In the in the moment or pre-planned. So if you're coming up against a team, um, so if if I'm Tipperary or if I'm um, any of those other teams who have those centre forwards who I know can go in there and, and do a role and be uh, knacky around you yeah. and drag you out of position, I'm going to try and do that. And you know that too. Yeah. So pre-game, are you like, well, if if he comes in and plays ten minutes there, don't be suckered into getting tight and then going out the field and leaving a hole for the other last to run in. Is that pre-game or are you going, well, I'm going to go with him because actually I think he's going to do more damage out there? It's a bit of both. Um, I suppose sometimes you kind of have to see it, see it and react. If I suppose if he's doing damage out the field, you'd want to go out and, and tag him or you need to get someone else to tag him for you. And maybe a lot of teams now, I suppose, are bringing another man out on top of, on top of you as well. So it doesn't feel like your man is kind of roaming a bit, but uh, I suppose every game is kind of different and you have to be able to adapt and teams are coming up with different different ways day in, day out of of um, challenging teams, so you just have to be able to adapt on the day is probably the best When do you get way. comfortable making those adaptations? When do you feel like, okay, I know what you're doing now, so I've seen enough of this? I suppose it's important not to get too much bogged down and think about it too much and kind of just go with instinct and trust, trust you'll deal with it kind of a bit and prepare yourself to deal with it. Um, so on the day you just just focus on your hurling and your work rate and all that come come together. I'd say like sometimes you can get bogged down too much on tactics and it affect your overall performance. As in you're thinking about it too much when actually yeah. you should just be doing the hurling. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, it's interesting that you mentioned at the start here about freedom and the position allowing you to have that bit of freedom when it comes to hurling. Is that the position that gives you the most freedom, or would you rather be playing somewhere else if you wanted to play off the cuff a little bit more? Um, Sometimes, sometimes you can get a bit of freedom. Sometimes you you don't. Like you might get on a lot of ball at times. You might just be plugging up channels and and for runs and all that, and stepping in front and stopping stopping them from hitting kind of ball there. So you, sometimes you can be kind of blocking up that way. So you mightn't be getting on the ball as much. But I suppose in terms of it is a central role. So when you do get the ball, you have you have a lot of areas you can kind of go. So it's kind of good that way. 
How familiar are you with uh, your dad's career? Like, is that something that you read about when you were a kid? Or is that something you were kind of? Uh, I would have watched a few old VR videos or whatever. Um, growing up, I suppose. Yeah, I would have been. Yeah, I suppose. Yeah, when you were younger, we would have been kind of in it a bit. And because um, uh, one of my favorite things, obviously the the white boots, which we can talk about in a minute. But um, one of my favorite things is that like there would have been summers where the lads would have been in New York and then they'd come back for the championship because Galway obviously only entered the championship at the semi-final stage. Yeah. You could have the best of both worlds. You could go off and <laughs> travel the world and have the crack and then you could come back and you could play senior championship hurling and win all Ireland. It was like <laughs> this kind of perfect, tiny window where... Um, or you could be Johnny Glynn. And do it now. And yeah, you, you can still do it today. <laughs> yeah, Johnny, like, I know Dad did it back in the day, but he'd always, he'd be training hard over there. Like, they'd be, they wouldn't be in... I suppose he enjoys the sun a lot. You can tell any time there's a bit of sun out here, like, <laughs> he's straight out on it, like, try to get that time back. Um, he might even bring a white pair of runners with him, <laughs> run around the garden. <laughs> but, um, I know Johnny, you can, Johnny's a lad you can trust, and you know he's doing work over there. You know, he's, you know, anytime he comes back, he's in top, top shape, and no one can really challenge him on that. So, like, uh, you kind of just have to trust him in that way. I know the game is kind of is evolving a lot, and it, it, seems, it seems a bit weird doing that but if you can trust a lad like Johnny to do it like why not like? yeah do you have that travel bug is that something that you kind of feel like is part of your future um, I suppose I did a bit when I was younger I was kind of went, went away I was hurling in Boston for a while and uh, a few few lads holidays as, as you will so I kind of did a small bit when I was younger so kind of happy enough and we just set up a new business there so kind of you're here for the future for a while, anyway. Are you, is it fair to call you a bit of a late bloomer in terms of um, the inter-county hurling scene? Uh, yeah, I suppose, it would, I suppose it would be, yeah. Um, yeah, I played a bit, I suppose, I played a bit minor and I didn't really, I didn't make, I didn't make the minor, minor panel, so I kind of, I just stopped really my interest totally in it for a while, for a year or two. And then after a while, I suppose I got a bite for it again, playing club and all that, and I said, I'll just go for this. We played a clip earlier on of um, Marie Crow talking about Shane O'Donnell, and obviously Shane O'Donnell bursts on the uh, national scene with a hat-trick in an all Ireland final, and becomes instantaneously one of the most famous hurdlers in the country. But um, he had to go to Harvard, and when he went to Harvard, Marie was saying that uh, he met a couple of Irish lads there, and he was like, don't talk to me about hurdling. I'm, I'm not here to be a hurdler, I'm here to be a yeah. researcher, I'm here to be the same as everybody else. And then a couple of months later, he's like, wouldn't mind just watching some hurling or listening to some hurling on the radio. <laughs> so he kind of, he had that bug, it was yeah. in there somewhere. Yeah, yeah. When you were away from 18 to 19, was there something gnawing at you that you felt like you needed to get back into the game? I suppose I would. I, I'd be fairly competitive, like, um, I'd be fairly competitive. So the, well, I was playing a lot of sports at the time too, playing up to five, like, so it was kind of take your pick then at that stage. And you played rugby? Played rugby in school, yeah. Um, I even played badminton in school. Right. <laughs> and was there, were Connacht interested at any point? Was there ever any prospect um, of them? I don't know, I don't think so. Uh, there, was, there, was, there was a lot of Connacht trials around at the time, but I wasn't overly, I got, it got a bit too serious for me then in the school, so I had to kind of step away because I was putting a lot of time into hurling and Gaelic at the time. Right. So Gaelic football was an option? Yeah, it was, yeah. Would have been pretty much in kind of the last five years I haven't really kicked the ball. I don't know where we're going off I kicked it. Yeah, so what got you back into it? Why, why did you get stuck back into hurling? I suppose, um, I don't know, it's just, just a great sport. Like, it's a great feeling playing. It's, you know, you're, you're out there and you just have to win your own ball and it's a dog eat dog. It's just... Was there any pressure involved in being your dad's son? No, he never really put any pressure on me. Um, like, if we want, if I want to go out for pucks, I go out. But he never forced. He'd never force it on on me or or Sean. Um, but from the from the Galway hurling community, it would have been like, well, there's a chip off the old block. He's a big lad. He plays six. I mean, you know, yeah, the expectation, I guess, rather than pressure. Is that is yeah. that? Maybe a uh, way I suppose there could there could have been a small bit of it there, but I you wouldn't really put yourself under that. Yeah, I wouldn't really put any heat to it. I was just. Happy playing my few sports and, yeah. and seeing where that would take me. And so then when you do eventually decide to kind of commit to hurling, the, the speed at which you nailed down the sixth position and became um, somebody that people talk about as one of the best centre-backs in the country, that was really quick. So like it's kind of late bloomer, you know, but from the time you're 24 to now, everybody's like, well, this guy's number six and 
um, well maybe the last three seasons is more accurate, <laughs> is like uh, nailed on number six and one of the best in the country. What was the what's the growth? How does that process happen? I suppose there's a lot of behind the scenes work and just trying to work hard and, and improve yourself as as you go, like and as much as you can. And I suppose is that a change of mindset from your part then? I think I always had that mindset for right. for a long time. I think you'd need it for a while, like not not playing as many game times and being still being there. You kind of need that mindset, so that will be tested a lot. But um, I know you, to evolve, you need. You, I suppose it's great to be playing playing games, and you can't you can't beat that. Like yeah. And then the the evolution of this Galway team in, in recent years to go from a team that had had so long without an All Ireland win, um, and to be part of the team that eventually gets over the line. What difference does that make to the group's confidence? I suppose. We, we we always knew we were um, a good team if we worked worked hard enough and we have I suppose there's a lot of talented hurlers in, in Galway so we just knew we had to bring a lot of work rate and, and commitment to it and we were in with a chance. But all the previous teams in, in between had loads of great hurlers and did have work rate and commitments. Yeah, I suppose, yeah. Yeah, there were a lot who were unlucky in fairness, you know, it was a long, a long time and a few, a few did come close and I know it, it was it was great to do that, but um, yeah, it's, it was it was a good feeling, and I suppose it was great for the supporters and all that. We want to give them a team that they can proudly support. Is it something that when you're in the middle of your playing career, you actually do need to lean back on and go, "Hang on a second, now you know we we deserve to be considered all Ireland contenders, and we consider ourselves all Ireland contenders, and we know we can do it." Um, or is that something that you just park and say, at the end of my career, I look back on the fact that we won medals? Like, um, at some I'd level, fair, you need yeah, to I'd first kind of look, park it for now, um, cause it was, and then just see see where it takes you and just enjoy enjoy the journey. Like, because there is a lot of commitment coming in from from every team now. It's it's massive, and every team is is really going for it. Yeah. Does what happened last year drive you on a little bit more than what happened the previous year? I suppose you have to take you have to take drive in in what you can like, and I haven't really dwelled on it too much. I've been focusing more on my myself and my own performances and trying to get that right. But um, yeah, kind of you'd have you know you, like you do, you want to you want to do better and try better yourself. Was there much talk about that in in the weeks and months after that? Because it was uh, kind of an unusual performance in Galway that day where. Limerick were the better team, but you came so close in the end to forcing a replay that there must have been a huge element of regret there, but a huge element of we could still arguably be one of the best teams in the country. Um, I suppose yeah, we were kind of nearly straight back into into club action after that, you know, which was probably a good a good way, a good distraction like of 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 for that like. But um, yeah, it's it's kind of a funny one. I haven't really dwelled on it too much. I suppose I didn't really get time just because we just we just kind of kept kept going with club for, for some reason, so I didn't really look too much on it. It kind of feels like the season's kind of come together now. Yeah, it was a bit of a mad year for Galway in that um, you played well without ever actually hitting your peak last year. It, it felt like you were 85% of what you had been at your best the previous year, and that actually this team still has loads more in it. Yeah, I suppose it's, yeah, it's just one of them where I suppose we didn't didn't really rightly get going, um, and yet reached an All Ireland final. Yeah, uh, I felt we were we were good in the lead, the build up games. Like it's just I suppose it's just on the day it can happen. You, you can be just a bit flat for some reason. It does happen. Like uh, you have to prepare yourself the best for it. But times it can happen. Yeah, but that must give you a bit of confidence heading into this year. That actually, you know, if we make a few little changes here and there, you know, and if if we do find our true level, that we're going to be hard beaten. Yeah, um, yeah. You, I suppose you, you want to really focus on, and I suppose the next game is the best thing you can really do, and try and get a performance there. And like, it does build. It builds from the first game, and you kind of need to stay, stay building, and your confidence will go with that. So the next game is Carlo, and we're all kind of looking, looking forward to that, and where that will take us. Well, listen, best of luck with that, and best of luck with the new business as well. Do you want to give it a plug while you're here? Ah, uh, Ben, it was Galway there. <laughs> Two lads are working for the thanks. There you go. Uh, Garrod's in studio today with thanks to Litwoods Ireland, who are proud sponsors of the All Ireland Senior Hurling Championship. Follow their hashtag Style of Play campaign on the Littlewoods Ireland website or their social channels.